Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Uh, that was a close one. A massive success upon release, Beetlejuice went through a strange and unusual production that saw multiple rewrites and firings, not to mention the dodging of some seriously questionable casting choices. But through the terrific performances by its cast and creative skirting around a small budget, the movie became one of the best horror comedies ever worthy of a sequel that has been in development hell for over three decades. So let's open up the handbook for the recently deceased. Oh, th this book reads like stereo instructions. Listen to this. And shake, 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 senora, because it's showtime. Let's find out what the f happened to this movie. Following the massive success of Pee-wee's Big Adventure, which pulled in $40 million on a seven budget, Tim Burton had his pick of what his next project would be. One thing he knew, it wouldn't be talking horse movie hot to trot. Instead, he set his sights on the bat signal, planning to adapt to Batman. But when that didn't pan out, yet, he came across a script courtesy of David Geffen. That screenplay by Michael McDowell was titled Beetlejuice, and that's two words just as the opening credits indicate, even though the poster shows it as one. But I must express myself. If you don't let me gut out this house and make it my own, I will go insane and I will take you with me! Before Geffen took over, Larry Wilson was brought along to play with the script, which the two took to Universal, where they were told, quote, this piece of weirdness, this is what you're going to go out into the world with? You're developing into a very good executive. You've got great taste in material. Why are you going to squander all that for this piece of shit? Will you guys shut up and leave me alone? I've got all this paperwork to do. Once Geffen hired Burton as director, he basically canned McDowell and Wilson over creative differences. Instead, opting for Warren Scarin of Beverly Hills Cop 2 fame to incorporate more humor into the script. And it needed it, as McDowell's script was dark. As in, oh, we'll show you a car crash, all right. As in, Barbara wailing in pain and fright after one of the covered bridge pilings impales her arm. As in, it's not a dog that causes the accident, but a group of mad hunters. As in, Beetlejuice was a murderous asshole who wanted the Dietz family dead, and not a lecherous perv after a child bride. Okay, so the final draft was a bit disturbing, too. Oh. There you go. I'm telling you, honey, she meant nothing to me. Nothing at all. It might not be a surprise now that Wes Craven was once attached. It's not unusually ice I cut. A monkey, Wes? I mean, Jesus, you guys aren't even trying anymore, are you? What, the market research says people love monkeys. We love this monkey! Do so. See? There were other major changes made as well. In the original versions, Beetlejuice has wings, snake eyes, and the features of a Middle Eastern man. There was also a younger sister for Lydia Dietz named Kathy, who would at one point be attacked by Beetlejuice in squirrel form. Further, Lydia was supposed to die in a fire. These were creative differences, all right. She has such a tendency to overreact. Don't worry, we're not relying on her. And so, casting could begin. As for the title role, Burton wanted Sammy Davis Jr. for some goddamn reason, while producers were aiming for the likes of Bill Murray, Jack Nicholson, Tim Curry, Christopher Lloyd, Dudley Moore, and Sam Kinison. In describing the character, Wilson said he was Groucho Marx from Hell, which somehow screamed the guy from Mr. Mom. Michael Keaton contributed greatly to the look of Beetlejuice, including the finger in an electrical socket hair, nasty ass teeth, and moldy face. He even reportedly partly based the look on Chop Top in Texas Chainsaw 2. Here, here, who do I have to kill? Here, hold that for me, would you? There you, there you go. You don't have to kill anybody. Ah, possession. Good. He also had a lot of say in Beetlejuice's dialogue, ad-libbing the bulk of his lines through his mere two weeks of shooting. That is why I won't do two shows a night anymore, babe. I won't. I won't do. Meanwhile, Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis would play the recently deceased Adam and Barbara Maitland. Cute couple. Look nice and stupid, too. Lydia Dietz, the proto Hot Topic mascot, would be Winona Ryder, feeding out Justine Bateman, Jennifer Connelly, Alyssa Milano, Sarah Jessica Parker, Molly Ringwald, Brooke Shields, and more, with her performance in Lucas sealing the deal for Burton. Your lunch is sneaky. Ryder hoped the role would bring her popularity in high school. Instead, she was labeled a witch due to her look. 
which was actually inspired by the female audience at a Cure concert. Lydia's parents would be played by Jeffrey Jones and Catherine O'Hara. Cheers wouldn't let Kirstie Alley do it, although Angelica Houston was closest to the role, even edging out Sigourney Weaver, Linda Hamilton, and more. The supporting cast would include TV icons like Dick Cavett, crooners like Robert Goulet, and classic Hollywood stars like Sylvia Sidney. Not bad, not bad. Now you. Greenlit at a $15 million budget, Beetlejuice began production on March 11th, 1987. Two key contributors would be production designer Bo Welch and cinematographer Tom Ackerman, who worked closely with Burton to build the aesthetic from his vivid storyboards. Burton pointed them to German Expressionism, although Burton didn't pinpoint specific movies, but rather moods and tones. As a bonus, Welch would later marry Catherine O'Hara. Exteriors were shot in the small Vermont town of East Cornet, standing in for Winter River, Connecticut, which the team actually found through postcards. It was here that the crew constructed the iconic house, the covered bridge the Maitlands drive off of, and more. The rest of the movie was shot in Culver City, California. As far as how the afterlife was conceived, it was decided that it should feel like a dreary government office that had a limitless perspective. That sounds about right. How do I look? There are no mirrors on this side. Fine, you look fine. Yeah? Fine. Thanks, I've been feeling a little flat. <laughs> Just $1 million of the budget was designated for visual effects, a lot of which was practical work, mirror shots, and stop motion. So that decapitated Alec Baldwin? Yeah, all trickery, with the actor behind a black show card. And the mirror scene where Barbara holds a horse statue in front? The team turned the glass around so it faced the room, moved the actors to the other side, and, quote, you're looking into the set but the fireplace had been turned around and the mirror had been taken out. Really simple, said art director Tom Duffield. But no, the sandworms were created in post. Whoa, sandworms. You hate them, right? <laughs> I hate them myself! There was some simple trickery in the famous Deo scene, too. After problems achieving the desired effect of the shrimp hands grabbing the guest's face, Dick Cavett recommended Burton try shooting the scene in reverse. Regarding the song itself, Burton wanted to use a track by pop band The Ink Spots. What? It was actually Jeffrey Jones that gets credit for choosing Deo, the Banana Boat song, by Harry Belafonte. Oh, oh, that's good. Lending the most crucial component to the scene. And to think, the studio wanted to cut it. How you, uh, how you doing down there, Bobby? Don't give me that attitude, you guys. I'm doing it all for you. Of anecdotal note, actor Glenn Shaddix, who played Otho, had Deo play at his funeral. Another terrific moment had some afterthought to it as well. The last scene, in which Beetlejuice gets his head shrunken, was added after production wrap as a way to send the audience out on a high note. The other clothes originally had Lydia dancing to When a Man Loves a Woman instead of Jump in the Line. What, no love cats for the Cure fans? Goodbye, Robert Smith. Thank you for your help. Visit us again. Disintegration is the best. After the movie wrapped and the movie awaited release, Warner Brothers announced they wanted to rename Beetlejuice to House Ghosts. Burton retaliated with another alternative, Scared Sheetless. <laughs> good, good one. The title, of course, would remain Beetlejuice, and Keaton only had to be in the movie for 17 minutes to secure it. Retrospectively, star Alec Baldwin said, and, uh, when we did Beetlejuice, I had no idea what it was about. I thought maybe all of our careers are going to end with the release of this film. We're all going to be dead. But Baldwin and company would have little to worry about, as Beetlejuice opened on March 30th, 1988 at number one, going on to grow $73.7 million and become the 10th highest grossing movie of 1988 behind Cocktail, Moonstruck, and Die Hard. Attention, whoever you are, this channel is reserved for emergency calls only. Oh, shit, lady, do I sound like I'm ordering a pizza? The soundtrack would also do remarkably well. Composed mostly of Danny Elfman's memorable score, it also featured two Harry Belafonte songs, the soundtrack hit the Billboard 200 and charted for six weeks. Uh, sounds like better you got an A in the math test. <laughs> he likes it. Beetlejuice didn't just fare well with the critics, famed critic Pauline Kael called it a comedy classic, but also on the awards circuit. At the Saturn Awards, it took home Best Horror Film, Best Supporting Actress, 
Sylvia Sidney as Juno, and Best Makeup with another five nods. But its biggest accolade came at the 61st Academy Awards, where Beetlejuice won the Best Makeup Oscar, besting Coming to America and Scrooge. And we all know that Keaton should have been nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Hey, it's okay. You know why? I don't want to do business with you deadbeats anyway. Thank you. And its legacy hasn't even begun to slow down. It's consistently ranked as one of the best horror comedies ever, and the American Film Institute would later rank it as the 88th funniest movie ever. The year after its release came an animated series developed by Burton, in which Beetlejuice and Lydia are buddies going on silly little romps. There too were video games, including a totally passable one for NES. 30 years after Beetlejuice came out, came The Musical, which opened in 2018 in Washington, D.C., before hitting Broadway in 2019, closing temporarily during the COVID-19 pandemic, before officially bowing in 2023. In the title role was Alex Brightman, who also voiced the character on an episode of Teen Titans Go. Sandworms! Ah! <laughs> and then there was the sequel. And then there wasn't. And then there was again. And then... And then, <laughs> I'm gonna come in there, and I'm gonna put my foot in your ass if you say, and then, again! Talk of a Beetlejuice sequel began as early as 1990, when Jonathan Gems, later of Mars Attacks, set out to pen Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian, which would find the Dietz family off to Hawaii and Beetlejuice turning into something called Jucifer. Burton was game, apparently wanting a German expression as beach movie hybrid. So think Dr. Caligari meets Frankie and Annette. Even Keaton and Ryder were attached, but the project was pushed aside for Batman Returns. I believe the word you're looking for is... Ah! In 1991, Burton approached Daniel Waters of Heathers, thus a Winona Ryder connection, while Warner Brothers hired Pamela Norris from SNL in 1993. Kevin Smith even gave it a poke in 1996, but ditched it for Superman Lives, another failed Tim Burton project. He later said, Didn't we say all we needed to say with the first Beetlejuice? <laughs> Must we go tropical? <laughs> there was also another screenplay circling development by Warren Scarin called Beetlejuice in Love, in which Beetlejuice would chase the tail of a woman who recently lost her would-be fiancé after falling from the Eiffel Tower while proposing. That's enough now. Can you stop this? Otho. It's too late, Charles. I'm sorry. As far as a more modern timeline on the Beetlejuice sequel, in 2011, Seth Graham Smith, later Dark Shadows, also directed by Burton, was set to write. In 2013, Ryder hinted at a return herself. The following year, Burton confirmed a screenplay was indeed in the works. In 2015, Ryder again confirmed her return. In 2017, Mike Vukadinovich of Television's Kidding was hired for a rewrite. In 2019, Warner Brothers announced it was shelved. In 2022, Burton neither confirmed nor denied his involvement. Hope you like Italian. <laughs> where'd you go? Hey, come on! Hey, where'd you go? Oh, hey, come on! You gotta work with me here! I'm just trying to cut a D! What do you want me to do? And yes, as this video is being produced, talk of a Beetlejuice sequel is running wild. At this point, Plan B has come on board and reports have emerged of Jenna Ortega circling a role. Lydia's daughter, perhaps? And Jean-Claude Van Damme is reportedly playing a ghost. Whether or not the sequel actually ever comes to fruition is anybody's guess. But who knows? Maybe if we say Beetlejuice 2 three times in a row, it'll appear. Beetlejuice. 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 It's showtime.